Welcome to the Grants Night of the Geelong Community Foundation. My name is Tony McManus. Now, more than ever, the resilience and efficiency of the Geelong Community Foundation is evident. This time last year, we stood in front of 300 people at GMA HBA Stadium and announced for the first time a million dollars worth of grants. Uh, haven't things changed since then? This year, um, we'll be shortly announcing uh, the current round and also we'll make reference to some of the emergency grants that we've done in earlier months of this year too. Now, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Geelong Community Foundation, Hayden Tawney, and he will just tell you a bit about an update about how the foundation is performing, in a nutshell, where our funding is coming from. Thank you, Tony. It's an interesting grants night tonight, but uh, the grants night is only possible because of the generosity of our donors. We now have 160 named sub funds, and that's an increase of 15 on last year. So to all our donors across the region, a very big thank you. Our funds under management started the year at 25.6 million, and despite the rollocking of the share market, we've finished the year at 26.7 million. That's after the $1 million of grants that we've meted out to our regional community. So donors, thank you very much. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. The total of the funds under management managed to have a positive return of over 4% for the year. And the average over our five year for our investment performance has been 8.58%. I'm sure many of you would appreciate that those sorts of returns are particularly good. We've also benefited this year with the addition of four new board men members. And uh, we've welcomed Bridget Kelly, Cameron White, Barton Van Laar has returned to our GCF board, and Michael Betts, who was involved in the formation of the board, has also joined us this year. The board works hard on behalf of our donors and uh, much work is done around grant making time by the board members. I'd also like to thank our executive staff of Gail Rogers, our CEO, Jeanette Jewell, the administration assistant, and our development manager, Tony McManus. It's been a terrific year in challenging circumstances and I know that our grant recipients are very happy to have received the funding we've been able to provide. Thank you one and all for your generosity of the Geelong Regional Community. Thanks for that Hayden. It's great to see how well the fund has continued to grow in these challenging times. So after that summary of where we've raised our money from, it's now my pleasure to introduce our CEO Gail Rogers who will show you how well the money's been spent on all the uh, outstanding organisations that we support around Geelong. So uh, over to you, Gail. Thanks, Tony. Uh, look, it's been great um, working with you over the last 18 months and I really appreciate the effort of yourself and Jeanette in these really challenging times. Um, we're working from home and it's, and it's working really well. So thanks to both of you for all that you do for the, founda for the foundation. Um, before I start, I just want to acknowledge the staff and volunteers of community organisations in our region. In the current climate, um, organisations are having to navigate service disruption, falling income, rising demand, uh, and potentially higher operating costs, which is an absolute tightrope. I know many have thin margins and don't have a big buffer of reserves to call on, um, but we need you to be there when we call. Within our region, we've developed a strong and supportive network of grant makers and trusts and foundations. And I know that if you are to uh, engage us, reach out to us, we will do everything that we can uh, to support your needs. So in many cases, we, we received a second um, application and a second round of information from organisations. Our grant making focus really shifted to emergency mode. Um, as we were, were reviewing those applications, we identified a number of organisations that were in critical need. Um, and there were six grants that we were able to um, take to the board um, after the Grants Committee had reviewed um, and uh, seek approval to pay those grants early and get them out to those organisations who needed them most. 
Um, the Grants Committee, uh, I think we doubled the number of meetings that we had this year in terms of reviewing um, every application, um, which was certainly a challenge, um, all conducted um, remotely um, via Zoom meetings. Um, the Schools and Philanthropy Program, which I know many of our donors absolutely love, um, we had to um, put on hold, although a number of the schools did a fabulous job to um, engage in the process before um, we needed to close. Uh, Sacred Heart, Clonard, Oberon and Matthew Flinders were involved this year. So we will offer that opportunity to those same, same schools um, again next year because it is such a great program. So in 2021, uh, we have allocated again over a million dollars um, in grants, in fact, a million and 32,500, uh, 48 different grants. Um, and you'll find the information um, and detail about those, all of those grants on our website um, and the link is, is on the screen. Um, we also, of course, provided the Adroit uh, Golf Day Capital Grant and Gateways was the recipient of that $100,000 grant this year. Uh, the Sanctuary, uh, was the recipient of our Philanthropy 500 grant this year of 52,500. We also uh, implemented our back to school program again this year, providing $50 vouchers to many primary and secondary schools across the region. Uh, the, the foundation put almost $50,000 into that um, program, which was matched by other community foundations. Um, providing $86,000 worth of $50 target vouchers. And it's fabulous to get the stories from principals and wellbeing officers in the schools around the impact um, that those vouchers have. We also continued to support uh, mature age students at the Gordon um, with $10,000 in scholarships. So it's been uh, a, a fabulous year, um, again, for the foundation to be able to provide over a million dollars in funding. Um, in fact, since we started, nearly $10 million um, in grants has been contributed to the community, a huge result. Um, but can I say again to our community organisations, please talk to us, keep us engaged, um, let us know how you're travelling and uh, we'll do everything we can to support you um, over these next um, difficult months. I just want to close with um, some information about Philanthropy 500. Um, it's been a fabulous program for the Foundation. We're in our fourth year this year and I have a fabulous committee um, of volunteers who help with the organisation of that program. Um, so we are currently finalising our fundraising. Um, we're on target um, to reach, um, uh, or, or we're heading for our target of 180 donors, the same as, same as what we had last year. Um, so we will open our grant round on the 17th of August and close on the 14th of September and we will have a grant available again of over $40,000 for the community to apply for. We'll shortlist um, those applications and then uh, provide uh, three grant opportunities for our donors to engage in and vote on. It will be a virtual vote this year. We won't um, be able to have an event um, but we will provide an online opportunity um, for our donors to be able to engage in the shortlisted uh, applicants and vote on which uh, organisation will receive that grant this year. So thank you to all of our donors um, that allow us uh, the opportunity to provide grants to the community. Um, it's a great time of the year to be able to immerse yourself uh, in those applications and understand what's happening in our community um, and some challenging circumstances that um, the community is dealing with right now. So thank you, uh, appreciate your time, uh, and back to you, Tony. Thanks, Gail. And how good was it to hear about the performance of P500 this year, or Philanthropy 500, to uh, achieve over 150 uh, registrations is an outstanding performance in this current climate. Now, uh, we'll just uh, give you the opportunity to review a short video that will show you some stories about the emergency grants that we've uh, issued early in the year. We're delighted to provide an $80,000 grant to, to, to Diversitat to assist with the program that Carly runs. So Carly, just tell me a little bit about the work that you do. So I'm the housing coordinator at Diversitat. So my role is to house all newly arrived refugees that arrive in Geelong. Um, first we pop them into short term accommodation and then they're there for 28 days generally. And then from that 28 days, we try to find them suitable accommodation. 
wanted to introduce you to Mar Marcus Godinho from Fairshare, um, who provides support to Geelong with emergency meals three days a week to Geelong Food Relief Centre, the Salvos and the Outpost. Um, so we are delighted to provide a $24,000 grant with, uh, in collaboration with the Dawn Wade Foundation to be able to provide a new van to ensure that food keeps um, coming to Geelong. Our grant recipients uh, Feed Me Bellarine and we're delighted to be able to provide a grant of $40,000 to this amazing organisation to be able to support people in need on the Bellarine. Geelong Community Foundation is awarding a $40,000 emergency grant to the Lazarus Community Centre who are uh, particularly uh, on our radar at the moment because of the work they do for the most vulnerable members of our community, the homeless. It's a grant of $40,000 to this amazing organisation um, who's doing great work uh, here in this community. Okay, that was a great video package that highlights some of the emergency grants that we've had the privilege of being able to fund. I did particularly enjoy my visit to the old Geelong Jail site where that wonderful organisation Lazarus Community Services are operating from. It would be fair to say at the moment our collective mental health is being tested. In particular, the youth demographic are very much at risk at the moment. Read the Play is a standout organisation that is providing excellent support to the mental health of youth in our region. We were able to provide a $17,000 grant to help Read the Play deliver those important services. It's now my privilege to be able to introduce Michael Parker, the General Manager of Read the Play, who will tell us a bit about how that grant has been spent and the expected benefit for the youth in our region. Over to you, Michael. Thanks, Tony. We're really excited at Read the Play to be able to receive this grant from the John Community Foundation. With COVID times currently, obviously a lot of organisations are changing how they operate, and we're no different at Read the Play. While we normally deliver our programs to young people at sporting clubs, this grant has allowed us to move into the online space with the development of online training modules for player wellbeing officers at clubs and for parents. These modules allow the player wellbeing officers and parents to be able to recognise signs and symptoms of mental illness within a young person, know where to go for help if that young person needs a bit of support or referral, and also how to open up a conversation with a young person around their mental health and wellbeing and if they're having any troubles. The other part of this grant that's been really helpful has allowed us to train up Taylor, our education coordinator, to be a youth mental health first aid presenter. Our plans for this is that we can soon deliver the mental, youth mental health first aid training course across Geelong and being able to provide it to clubs free of charge to greater increase their mental health literacy as we move forward. Again, in, in, on behalf of Read the Play, we're really thankful to the John Community Foundation for this grant and we look forward to delivering this training across the region. Thanks, Michael. And how good is that online training initiative? Very relevant to the current climate that we're all dealing in. Now it's time to uh, wrap up the proceedings. Uh, it's very important to acknowledge all of those who have helped put this uh, package together tonight. In particular, the man behind the camera, the great Cormac Hanrahan. Cormac, many thanks for your support, not only of tonight, of the Geelong Community Foundation over time and the great work you do with the Philanthropy 500. Izzy Rollins from Circus Media, she's done a great job behind the scenes just organising all this and she'll be looking after all the social stuff, so uh, thanks again for that Izzy. Spot for Joe, where we're based here today, thank you for the ability to use your venue here. And uh, to our donors, we're grateful for your ongoing support, particularly for the donors who have jumped on board this year in trying times. That support has been very much appreciated. To our grant recipients for the privilege of being able to continue to support the vital on the ground work that you guys do. Thanks again for that and keep up the good work there. And uh, a really important point is that the demand on the resources of the organisations that we support has gone through the roof. If you're in ability to uh, potentially offer some additional support, uh, you can either contact myself or Gail Rogers and if you're not in position to offer some additional support or contributions, just simply liking and sharing this uh, video will be, do a really good job in terms of helping promote the important role that the Geelong Community Foundation does throughout the greater Geelong region. So um, that's a bit of a wrap for tonight. Thanks again and uh, be well in these trying times. Mm -hmm.